time for Around the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by the Butterfly Palace. Have the best day ever adventuring through the rainforest at the Butterfly Palace and Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. And here we are. We made it to Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. Tis the weekend. It's fantastic. After you work a little bit. And then, and then close. tis the weekend. Very close. Um, all right. We're going to begin with following up some of the election news from Tuesday. Uh, some of them were closer than I would have thought. Um, so here's an interesting one. Taney County voters said yes to an 18 cent property tax levy to pay for a new public library center in the county but it only passed by 46 votes. Very close. Ha, very close. But again, it's a yes. Um, That means the average homeowner will pay about $59 per year. The current Taney Hills Library in Branson is privately funded and cannot continue to afford to operate after the end of this calendar year. So with this new money, the goal is to get a new library that is publicly funded within the next two to three years because they have to save the money from the tax levy in order to get the building. So they don't know yet whether they're going to move into an existing building somewhere or build a brand new one. But either way, it's on the way eventually. Um, Also, at Lake of the Ozarks, a tax levy to pay for firefighters narrowly failed in the election this week. The Lake Ozark Fire Protection District was asking taxpayers to pay for station maintenance, new equipment, as well as recruiting and retaining firefighters. Uh, The tax increase lost by fewer than 40 votes. So two just super close ones that I thought were worth mentioning. Uh, firefighters are now looking at grants as a possible funding means. Well, it's interesting because typically August elections don't do very well when it comes to turnout. Uh, so few votes made the difference in, in both of those. I mean, right. less than 50 in yeah. both of them, Yeah, which is crazy to think about. Right. But uh, it's just a lot of people don't show up for those. You know, it's an off year. It's not a political season vote uh, in August. So. Maybe that'll change minds going forward one way or the other. Right. About the importance of showing up. Uh, After an investigation, the feds have released their final report into a collision between an Amtrak train and a dump truck in Minden, Missouri. That happened in June of last year. The National Transportation Safety Board says the probable cause of that crash was the 54-year-old driver of the dump truck. He drove into the train crossing as the train was coming through it, traveling nearly 90 miles an hour. It caused several cars from the train to derail, and all four people were killed, including the the driver of the truck. Nearly 150 people were hurt on that train. Uh, So uh, that is the final, uh, that's the final idea of what happened that came from the feds. As inflation continues to take a big chunk out of everybody's monthly budget, more and more, this is sad, more and more Americans are using credit cards and putting debt on credit cards. In fact, credit card debt just hit a brand new all-time record high, never been higher than right now. In total, Americans now have more than a trillion, it's a number that you can't even fathom, a trillion, more than a trillion dollars of credit card debt racked up, all of us combined. Uh, the second quarter alone saw balances jump by almost fifty billion dollars. And this same, when you get the numbers that huge, the the increase monthly and quarterly is is insanity. Like uh, like what we see with the national debt, and whatever trillion that is, thirty seven trillion or something, uh, that just grows. You can watch it; it's just by millions of dollars yeah, growing. Gosh. Crazy. Um, all right. In other news, Disney Plus is now planning to crack down on password sharing. So that comes as the streaming service reports another drop in subscribers for the second straight quarter. Disney is also planning to raise prices for its ad free version of Disney Plus and Hulu, jumping to $14 and $18 respectively in the coming months. Of course, Netflix recently started um, cracking down on password yep. sharing as well. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. They should, right? It's their company. They can do what they want. Um, All right. If you're from here, you already know this. If you're not from here and you're just stumbling upon this, let me be the first to tell you. Branson is getting some national recognition for its live music scene. Based on a national poll by CheapoTicketing.com, they have placed Branson as the number five in its ranking of America's best live music scene 
considered a hidden gem. Hmm. So that means places like Nashville and New Orleans are not in this list because they're not hidden gems ah. because everybody knows about them. Gotcha. So this is hidden gems and um, Branson brings in number five. So not too shabby. The group surveyed 3000 live music lovers to create a ranking of best under the radar live music destinations. Well, won't be that way for long. I mean, Terry Bradshaw's in town singing. So, um, <laughs> Terry. Oh yeah. He's the football guy. The football yeah, guy. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, let me tell you this. You don't care, but I care deeply. Stillwater, Oklahoma, home of Garth Brooks. Any Garth Brooks fans? Yes. I saw you at the concert. He got his start in Stillwater, Oklahoma. They came in at number 25. So Branson, number five, Stillwater, number 25. Okay. There you go. Okay. There I care are. deeply. It's impressive. Yes. Garth and Sandy, they still have their tree. Um, there's a tree that says Garth and Sandy. It's still there. You can go see it if you want. They have a tree that says their name? They carved it. Oh. Yep. Okay. Like yeah. carved with like a pocket knife. I think they're divorced now. I know. <laughs> but the tree's still there. Okay. All right. That's something. Uh, hey, a good time is going to be had tonight at Rutledge Wilson Farm Park in Springfield. They're offering a great evening of catch and release fishing, which, man, our boy is going to go nuts over that. Uh, the cow. Don't there, tell him. There's a cow train. We'll be out there all night fishing. There's a cow train, a bounce house, campfire as well. You could bring your own food to cook, s'mores, right? Fishing and s'mores, and he'll never leave. That's true. S'mores and hot dogs. That is happening tonight, 6 to 9 you have to call ahead of time to register, though. They need to know who's coming and how many people. So call the uh, the park board, right, to mm -hmm. register. Yep. Uh, do that sometime today as early as possible if you can. $10 if you have your own gear. $15 if you need to rent some of the stuff from them to fish. Right. So that'll be a good time. Yes. Um, and finally, mark your calendars for this one. I know a lot of companies do this, different businesses around town and individuals. But registration is now open for the St. Jude Walk Run which is happening on Saturday, September 16th. Uh, so you have about a month to prepare for that. And part of that is getting your team together and then fundraising primarily online. Um, and all the money used um, or all the money raised is used for families who find themselves in need of St. Jude. Because yeah. if you go there, you get it free of charge because the good people of the Ozarks and elsewhere donate to make that happen. That's really amazing how that works. Yes. I'm actually doing the St. Jude half marathon this year. Um, there's four of us total and four of your friends, four of my friends, four total people, four of my friends, our group, I should say our team. We have a team of four, possibly five. I don't know if one of them might not be doing the half though. Anyway, um, two of our four were actually impacted by St. Jude. So it's kind of crazy because what so are the they, odds? 50% of our group, you know? They utilize the services right. of St. Jude. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every parent prays to not have to do that, but a lot of people do. Yeah. And man, what a difference they make. No doubt. All right. So, yeah, there you well, go. That's week, your Friday news. The weekend is here. We've been out of town this week. We've been in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, that's uh, where we're coming to you from uh, right now, where it's been hot. Turns out you can get a good cheap plane ticket to Scottsdale <laughs> this time of year. Who knew? Yeah, the Who heat knew? doesn't bother us. Ethan lived in the desert uh, for multiple years, and I like hot weather. So I'm like fifty nine dollars on Allegiant. It yes, please. Yes, please. And, and it wasn't it wasn't too hot. We went to the Grand Canyon. That was nice and cool. Yeah. Went to uh, Sedona. That was there fantastic. Is no oh. Arizona. Anybody? Anybody? Sedona. Arizona. Sedona song. Uh, but we had a uh, we had a fantastic time. Our kids are all at camp for the week, so we had an opportunity and said, "Well, why would we stay home?" Let's, I know. Let's I feel get like out it's our here. first date in like I don't know, fourteen <laughs> years or something. I was like, "This is the best date." It just keeps yeah. going. So we've decided to send our kids to camp every week. Yeah. <laughs> <Have> any, yeah. <laughs> we just got to find a different Stop. camp somewhere across the Stop. country to ship our kids off. We to. miss them like crazy, actually. Yeah, Every day. All right. But back okay. uh, on Monday, we will be back in our regular spots. And uh, we hope to see you then. Have yep. a great, great weekend. And we'll be back home soon. Bye. It's time for Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Here's your host, Abby Dyer. Good morning and welcome to Friday. We made it and we are in for quiet conditions through the course of the afternoon. But it is going to be a hot one again. 
High temperatures on this Friday. Yeah, we're heading back to the 90s. It's going to be a hot and humid day for sure. In fact, I have heat index values today that make it back into the triple digits. So let's dive right into the forecast today, shall we? Things are looking hot. It's warm out there this morning. There may be some areas of patchy fog this morning, much like what we had yesterday. So take it slow on the morning drive. If you live in a low lying spot, a place that typically sees those foggy conditions develop, plan a few extra minutes early today. I don't think we hold on to it long. The temperatures take off and that should burn the fog off quickly. Hot though with storm chances in the forecast as we head into the weekend. I mentioned today heat index value easily in the triple digits near 105 for that feels like temperature this afternoon. So make sure you have a way to cool off if you're spending any time outside that big summer ridge that I'm often watching in the summer months. It's indicating that it will kind of strengthen, move back into the summer center part of the country starting today, lasting through the weekend, which will push our temperatures back into the nineties and bring some of that lovely humidity back with it too. Isn't that always nice? That's what we're going to have this weekend. We see those dew points really increase and that means moisture is in place. I have some storm chances in the forecast this weekend. It is not a washout of a weekend. I do not want to give you that impression. Don't cancel your outdoor plans. I really think most of the rainfall this weekend is also going to happen during the nighttime hours. So it's tonight, late tonight into early Saturday morning that we have the best chance for rain and storms. We have another chance then Saturday night into Sunday. I'm holding on to these about 20% isolated chances for storms in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday. But as I said, a lot of this is going to be during the overnight hours. So if you're planning to head to the area, lakes, the pools, keep those plants. I think you're going to want a way to cool off outdoors. Friday evening, this is tonight. This is what we're looking at. A powerful line of showers and thunderstorms could come through. There's at least some indication that we could see some strong storms in terms of severe weather. I think it's a wind threat and a heavy rain threat with a lot of that if it does materialize. I expect that we then see the showers and storms kind of taper off on Saturday. Saturday morning, a lot of dry time through the afternoon on Saturday, and then Saturday night into early Sunday, some more showers and thunderstorms with, again, just isolated activity during the daylight hours on Sunday. I expect that we'll keep those hot temperatures, though, all weekend long with temperatures getting back into the 90s each day. A cold front comes through late on Sunday. That's what will knock our temperatures down as we head into early next week. High temperatures will return to the 80s. So we get a little bit of relief by then. High temperature today, how about 93 degrees, feeling more like 105 at the peak heating hours of the day. About a 20% chance for rain, better chance after sunset tonight, and then we will see scattered showers and storms in the forecast again as we head into your Saturday and Sunday. Monday, I have us dry, and you can see next week looks a little bit better with high temperatures. Uh, they're settling back into the 80s, so things are looking pretty good in that regard. As we look at the weekend, I also want to mention it's the Perseid meteor shower. It's peaking this weekend. So oftentimes you can see the Perseids, the meteors, anytime between July and August. The peak, though, is this weekend. And unfortunately, I think we're going to have a lot of cloud cover around both nights. If you happen to get some clearing, head outside, look up, see if you can see any of those. It peaks this weekend on the 12th to the 13th. So Saturday night into early Sunday morning, it's an annual meteor shower. We get this one every year, but this time it's a particularly good one, or it's predicted to be because the moon will only be about 10% illuminated. So when you have those really dark skies, it's easier to see uh, a lot of the meteors. We could have between 150 and 200 per hour. So I'm hopeful that we get a little bit of clearing, or maybe you can head out like in the pre-dawn hours, early in the morning before the sun comes up. That would probably be the best time to view some of these meteors. Speaking of the Perseid meteor shower, that was the weather brain twister question that I left you with yesterday. And it has to do with those Perseids. Here's the question. How fast are Perseid meteors going when they enter the Earth's atmosphere? Do you think it is 133,000 miles an hour, 212, or 450? The answer today on this Friday is A, 133,000 miles per hour. So uh, it's a lot. It's fast. Uh, but, you know, this is the slowest of the options that I gave you, and that's what makes them visible. So uh, it often does put on a nice little show. As I said, I'm hopeful that we get maybe even just a little bit of clearing to enjoy some of that light show. 
I'll leave you with the weather brain twister question that we're going to answer for you on Monday morning. Here it is. The toddler's truce was a policy in Britain from the 1940s until 1957. What do you think that referred to? Do you think it was A, safety standards for toys, B, TV broadcasting schedules, C, prices on things like diapers and milk, or D, free daycare for children under the age of two? That is the question that I will be answering for you early Monday morning on Around the Ozarks Wake Up Weather. Thank you so much for listening this morning on this Friday. Find a way to stay cool this weekend and, of course, dodge the storms. I will be chatting with you early next week. And if you need weather this weekend, make sure you log on to AroundTheOzarks.com. We've got you covered there with up-to-the-minute weather information.